So I have begun the recording, and at this point, anytime you guys want to intervene, remember how to do so, please click on the hand icon to raise your hand, green check mark, the X, whatever it is to call my attention, or just unmute yourselves, or write in the chat because I'm always paying attention to that as well. Okay, so today we're taking a look at the uh, COE transportation management end-to-end -end process. And we'll see how that one differs from the one we saw yesterday on UNOE, so UN Owned Equipment. Now, we remember the roles we were taking a look at yesterday, TS-01, Transportation Planner and Execution, TS-02, which is the one we focused on, Freight Order Management, whose main function is to update freight order stages, dates, actual charges, carrier, and freight PO. So we did that, and we took a brief look at submitting events. Today, we'll spend a little more time on that since we became familiar with the tabs and the types of documents that are generated in TM. So we'll spend a little more time with the submission of events and how CCP and TM talk to each other, even attachments if we have time to add a couple of attachments and see how they reflect in both systems. We also saw, we talked about the TS-03, TS-04, TS-05, and TS-07. So these are the main roles in TM. Again, we're still focusing on TS-02 today. Some of the acronyms, again, I'm going to send you this presentation. I believe yesterday we had a chance to see all these acronyms that are on the left column here. And on the right, we probably did not see the forwarding order, or maybe we did. Nonetheless, the forwarding order is the equivalent of the DTR document that generates in TM. But when we are using one of the load lists, which are Excels pretty much that we are going to be uploading to TM when we're dealing with COE or troop scenarios, we have a load list to upload to TM instead of raising a shopping cart. And those documents generate uh, what we call a forwarding order. Okay, so instead of a DTR, it's a forwarding order. Again, we also have the IncoTerm scenarios. Yesterday, we saw the ones for DAP, FCA, and XWorks. Now, we're going to see the um, version of that for COE and troop scenarios, mainly for the uh, COE scenarios, but it's the same thing for troops, which are the LOAs and non-LOAs. So remember, LOA for DAP and non-LOA for XWorks. We remember the freight units, purchase orders, and the SOW, statement of work. So all that was quite clear. Again, just a quick refresher. Let's remember yesterday, we also saw that uh, for the UNOE scenario, we raised the shopping cart, which we saw that. Of course, the approval, review, and approval of PO. We just went through this really quick and looked at the main fields. We saw how the Umoja system created the inbound delivery document. We didn't uh, spend any time with the packing because it didn't really concern you and it would have taken us uh, a lot of time in the WebEx session. We did see how that generated DTR. So you see this is the DTR document that today will be the FWO, the forwarding order, and also the freight units. That uh, acronym stays the same. We saw the goods vendor stage and how that affects TM or how TM reacts to what would be a DAP ankle term scenario or FCA ankle term scenario. So generating automatically the freight orders and assigning the carrier. In this case, we also, as the TM planner, had the option to go into TM and manage the freight orders. We also saw the XWork scenarios and FCA. We actually generated or, I guess, yeah, generated TM proposals or selected best TM proposals. We saw that as well in the system. We're going to be doing more of that today as well. So we're going to be focusing on this aspect of selecting best TM proposals. Uh, also, remember where we found the SOW form. We can also uh, refresh our memory on the procurement freight portion, even though that was quite simple, especially for this uh, section here at the bottom, right? So we're talking about this one mainly. We're not, again, today we're not gonna go through the entire shopping cart process, but we may assign the freight PO to a forwarding order and again, edit some routes, dates, and charges if that wasn't clear yesterday. And last but not least, we're also going to see the executing and monitoring stage. So we're going to be working with CCP and TM and start um, submitting events and see how one system talks to the other. So take a look at this mind map for UNOE scenario. And today's scenario, which I'm just going to skip through this quickly, is going to look like the following. 
Okay, so it looks very similar to the one we saw before, especially for the three last columns for planning, procurement, freight, and executing and monitoring. But now the COE scenario starts with what we call an, a load list, right? The uploading of an Excel load list, where we would have the uh, cargo load list, in this case, for the contingency owned equipment, and how we would load that list to TM. And that would also generate automatically a forwarding order and a freight unit. And again, depending on the INCO term we use, if we're talking about LOA scenario or non-LOA, how that would work in the system. So basically, it works the same as if this were DAP or XWorks. And the rest of the process is pretty much the same. OK, we also, let me just come up with these last animations here and see that we'll be taking a look at the same thing we saw yesterday, uh, but a little more in depth in terms of submitting events and attaching um, attaching also PDFs or Excels or whatever form we can attach to the systems. Okay, so basically we're going to start with the load list. First thing, this Excel load list and what that one looks like. And I have that one here ready for you guys. So this is what the load list looks like. Uh, you may be familiar with this one or not. But basically the way this works is it takes the information, a certain number of fields here, and we'll see which ones are taking data from the tabs that if we take a look at the bottom here, the summary tab, cargo load list, reference location tab, and reference TCC mission tab are feeding this tab here with the, the uh, content, right? So this data, like for example, Jakarta or Kalemi or other data that we can look at if we scroll to the right, okay, in terms of the BTD reference number, which is the MOU, pretty much, the INCO term, the troops contributing country, mission, all these pieces of data are all taken and fed by the other tabs that we're going to be looking at in a bit. Then we also have other uh, fields, and we can see the color legend at the bottom. Okay, it may not be exact, the color may not be exact, but it pretty much tells you what the where the information is coming from. So if we look at the source location, Jakarta, we see it's a sort of a pinkish color. And if we look at the legend, the information is retrieved from the summary tab. So we're going to go into the summary tab in a bit and see how that works. If we look at gray, so you see in this case the gray portion here may not be gray in this uh, Excel here exactly, but it's the info derived from the general cargo list tab. So we're going to see what that is. Here the general cargo list tab, we're going to take a look at those fields that are going to be in red. And we'll realize which ones are affecting these here in this uh, forwarding order upload tab. Same thing for the light blue, info retrieved from location table. So we have the reference location table here. And that does match exactly with the colors in the Excel. So we see that the source location, destination location are fed by the reference location tab. We also have a dark gray here, information retrieved from TCC mission tab, which is the last one to our right. And then the greenish color, which is the manual entry or mandatory fields, okay? And we'll see which ones those are. And again, the colors, especially this uh, light green color and this light gray color, are not exactly the same in this field. For example, these pick up date from and deliver to date from are in red, and these are also manual entry fields, and we'll see how those work. So let's take a look at these fields and what uh, where they feed uh, their data from, right? Where they take their information from. So source location, Jakarta, let's see. Let's take a look at the summary tab and see what we have here. So this summary tab is also in itself taking the information from the general cargo load list tab and just uh, doing exactly what it says, summarizing the data. So if we take a look at these fields in red, like MONUSCO, for example, here, or the troops contributing country, Indonesia, Jakarta, final destination, Kalemi, we also have the date that this was prepared in. Now, again, if they're not in red, they're not directly affecting our uh, summary list or a forwarding order tab. But we do have the summary of the information that we're going to be that we're going to be uploading. And again, let me do as I did uh, yesterday here, just close my inbox so it doesn't keep notifying me. We have the information related to containers, as you see here, vehicles, trailers, break bulk, and so on. And this is for the items, the weight, the value, and all this information that we're getting from here, as well as the one at the top, is also being fed by other tabs. For example, if we take a look at the general cargo load list, we see we have all the main information 
that is then summarized and added up together in the summary list. Okay, what this tells us pretty much is that we're going to have to create one of these Excel load list files for uh, each time we want to create a document in TM. So every general cargo load list will have one Excel file with dates, the cargo, uh, the INCO term, the MOU reference number, and for one particular, let's say, cargo load list. And if we have to add any more information from a different cargo load list, we'd have to create a new Excel because, of course, we're always going to be taking information from one part or the other. Then we have the reference location. As we see here, the city and the location ID characters. So remember, again, this tab is feeding the uh, forwarding upload list. So we have the reference location. We see it here. The location table in dark blue. So we see the source location is SUID in this case. So we could go here and search for that and see the SUID and see what that stands for. So SUID. In this case, we just have uh, the 1 and 2 here, which would be Jakarta or Sintool. And in this case, that's what it is. Source location, the information here is for Jakarta. And then destination location, SPCD. OK, let me get that out of the way. Okay, and that information would also be taken directly. We can also write the name of this city if by any chance we can find it with that instead. Let's see, Kalani. Okay, so that information would be coming from here as well. The same thing with the reference uh, troops contributing country tab here. The same thing works. Uh, the BP number here for the name is the one that's going to be feeding then if we look at the uh, forwarding upload tab at the end, the member country or shipper information. OK, so basically, that's where we get some of our information from. And then again, if we go back to the summary tab, we have our troops contributing country, cargo collection point, final destination information that will directly affect our final forwarding upload list here. OK, so once that information is populated, all that we would have left to populate ourselves would be the, for example, information related to weight, volume, quantity, and so on. Again, your product uh, would be by default set as a container, brake bulk, trailer, and vehicle. Same thing as the cargo load list items. What we would have to add manually as well are the dates. If, let's say, we wanted to change the dates, in this case, if we change the first date at the top here, if instead of June 1st, we'll do June second that will change all the other dates and the same thing will happen for the field right next to it so we'll go to zero six and the same thing okay all the fields would change oh, sorry let me get that back there we move over to our right remember again the mou reference information also being taken from the tabs that are linking the information over okay to, in this case, the summary tab and the INCO term that we have here. This is going to be very important because this is what's going to launch in TM the automatic generation of freight orders or if we're going to have to do those manually. We saw those in a shopping cart yesterday, how they were added to the shopping cart per line items. In this case, we have to add them per Excel. Let's say if uh, this was the INCO term for this means of transportation, we have to add the DAP INCO term to this column. And basically, nothing more uh, that we have to add manually, as the rest of the information would just be uh, taken from the tabs that are next to the uh, forwarding upload tab. Once we have all our information added to our list here, all we would have to do is just click on this button at the bottom here with the airplane and the trucks and boat and so on. And once we click on that, this would generate two documents. One would be this other Excel that uh, more a more basic or simplistic looking Excel and a also a notepad or a text file that we can't really see or at least it doesn't pop up the way this one does here but it will appear wherever it is that you have the Excel file saved so in this case if I go to my folder I saved the load list in one of my um, uh, folders here for COE and every time I click on that button we're going to see the generation of 
the text file here, the text document, and also right below it, the Excel. So in this case, I've generated one, two, and three. So I generated two earlier, so we wouldn't waste too much time if things didn't work with the Excel before. And now this is probably the one we just generated now, right, 1525. So this would be the one just generated. If by any chance uh, we wanted to change now the INCO term, in this case, let's say if everything comes from a cargo load list that was already defined to be a DAP scenario, or in, in this case an LOA scenario, we would have to recur to a different type of Excel, which would be the one for the XWorks that I also have here. If I double click on that one, it looks exactly the same as the one we were just looking at now. But of course, if we move over to the right, we'll see that the now the INCO term has changed to XWorks. Same thing. We would click on the, I'm going to enable the content first. We would just click on the button, and this would also generate automatically the Excel and the uh, text file. So in that case, this Excel is quite simple. It pretty much does the whole thing for you. All you have to do is mainly change manually the uh, dates, uh, some of the information related to the items that we're going to be loading, as well as the INCO term. And once we click on the button here, it'll generate our text and our Excel. Okay, because once we upload to TM, and we'll see how that is done, we can either upload the text file or the Excel file. All right, so any questions so far with this? I'm taking a look at the participants list. Okay, so far we have two attendees. By this time, I suppose that if we have two, that's what we're going to get. I'm going to check the chat. And uh, no questions there. Okay, so we can continue. All right, so we have this load list for uh, COE, contingency owned equipment scenario. Uh, I did both. I generated two types of documents, sorry, one for the LOA and one for the non LOA scenario, so the AP and X works. We can get rid of our Excels now. Uh, I won't save in this case. And we'll go directly. See, this is where I saved all my files, so we should now have more than one done at 3.30. And we'll log into TM, because now directly we don't have to go to SRM, we don't have to raise shopping carts, we'll go directly to TM and upload this file. Okay, so let me just log in. Again, remember, I'm always going to log into the training environment for TM. Okay, so our window's opening now. And I'm going to log in using my uh, COE credentials. So we did this yesterday. Once we had created our shopping cart, in this case, and we logged in as the uh, UNOE planner. In this case, we'll do as COE. I must have written the wrong password. Okay, so basically, we'll log into TM now as we did yesterday. So right now, I've just clicked directly on the NWBC launch NWBC. This window appears. I click on that again. Again, remember, when logging into production, you won't have to go through so many clicks. And we are faced with a screen that looks a lot like the one we were seeing yesterday. But instead of the, I believe it was the ERP logistic execution tab i'm not exactly sure how the name was right now we have now the forwarding order management tab so again we're dealing with forwarding orders instead of dtrs freight order man management just like yesterday's and planning so it works just like yesterday we can click on this tab go to overview forwarding order to view the forwarding orders that have uh, now been generated after we've uploaded our list Basically, that's the one link we'd be interested in going to right now. And the very next link that would be very important for us would be the forwarding order section here, the one called Mass Upload of Forwarding Order. When we click on this link, it'll take us to the upload 
a page where that's where we're going to load the uh, the text file or the Excel file that we have just generated from the load list before. Okay, so basically the overview forwarding order and the mass upload forwarding order links are the ones that we're interested in here. The freight order management tab, if we take a look at that, just like we did yesterday, we have an overview of freight orders if we want to look at all of them when we want to assign our freight PO. Remember that from yesterday, we would go to this middle tab here and click on overview freight orders. We can also display just a single freight order. Remember we can assign a freight PO order to a series of freight orders or we can assign one by one a freight forwarder to each of the freight orders. And the last but not least, the planning tab. And we saw this yesterday, we went directly to the transportation cockpit when we were organizing, when we were uh, planning on selecting the best transportation proposals, right? So that is the one thing we could do once we have already generated our forwarding orders. So we should have nothing in the transportation cockpit. So far, the first thing we'll do is forwarding order and click on the mass upload link. Okay, that takes us to a page that's very similar to any page in ECC when we're uploading an Excel. There's really no secret to this. Uh, ex instead of executing in background, I'm going to select execute in foreground. This Excel is, is quite small, so it will take no time. We have to select from a file, allow the computer to allow the system, TM system, to access my computer. Click on import from native file system. And then once we have that file system, all we have to do is look for where we keep our files, allow the access, Pumoja. And in this case, I would just have to go where I have saved my files. So just bear with me because they're quite hidden here. We used to have another file that would access directly to Pumoja, but that was erased this morning. So not very uh, helpful for me. So there you go, COE. So we can select any of these text files. Let's see the ones I've, sele I've made last here, the ones at 325. I'll select this first one. Click on it so that it shows under my file name. So it's, let's say, blued out here or highlighted in blue. Click on Choose. And once the file is there, all I have to do is click on Execute here. Once it uploads, if everything is correct, it'll show it all with green lights here as it does. It'll also show a forwarding order number and tell us that the status is fine. So this forwarding order number is the equivalent to the uh, DTR that we were generating yesterday with a shopping cart. Okay, so in this case, this one ends in 403. If we move to the right, we can see all the information that was taken from the Excel, so the source location, destination location, and so on, all the way to the end. So all the info that was in that forwarding order, initial forwarding order, is also going to be here. If by any chance there's an issue, you would have a red light instead of a green light here. And all we would have to do is click on the message here, the eye icon, and it would tell us what's wrong with the upload process. So maybe you didn't write the date correctly, you forgot to put the INCO term some other issues or some other mistakes with copying and pasting information that you could have made. It will tell you exactly what it is. All right, so basically that's how easy it is to upload a file. Again, so Matchbox, you select the file. In this case, I'm going to select the second one, the one ending here in 5.3. Make sure that I select that one as well. So let's expand this a bit so I know I'm selecting the right one. 5.3. You can leave the other one there because the only thing that matters is that you highlight the one you're uploading. Click on Choose. And once it's there, again, click on Execute. And that'll, once again, tell you if it's correct, if what you've done is correct and it works. So in this case, now our number ending in 404, forwarding order. Okay. Now, in this case, you can't just double click on this forwarding order number and go directly. Or you can, in this case, before the link was broken. And it does work. Okay, so I lied there. All right, so eventually you can just double click on this number. It doesn't look like a hyperlink and it didn't used to work before, but now it works uh, perfectly well, which is good news. You just double click on this forwarding order number and it'll take you directly to the, uh, f let's say the uh, forwarding order itself, forwarding order document itself, which is the 404. 
Okay. If uh, by any chance we don't remember it or we left or we exited this uh, platform and went back to the main tab again, we can always search for it going to the overview forwarding order hyperlink. But we reviewed that yesterday, so I'm not going to go into this unless we have enough time. I just want to go through the process quickly. So remember that we saw, and that we're probably in this one here, display. Let me just maximize the screen. And remember, as we saw yesterday, we have now the forwarding order. We're under the document uh, flow tab, if I'm not mistaken here. Yes, document flow. And we have our forwarding order number and our freight unit. Now, there was an issue, at least uh, this morning, when I was uploading the um, Excel file. And it's that the system was not automatically generating the freight orders for the LOA scenarios, which would be the DAP scenarios. In this case, it may have or may not. I'm going to check and see. So uh, remember that for DAP scenarios, Inquiterm scenarios, we should the system should be generating FOs automatically. But this morning, it wasn't working. Okay, under the document flow tab, we should already see freight orders if these were the AP scenarios. Okay, so let me close this window. Let me go back to the forwarding order management here. And what I can do is search for all the forwarding orders that I have generated. So if I want to search for them all at the same time, I can just click on this multiple selection arrow and add them all here. So in this case, I know I did a couple this morning, which were ending in 402. Okay, another one ending in 403, and same thing goes with the other ones, 401, and there was one more, Zero, oh, 404. Okay, so I know we should at least have these four uh, forwarding order numbers there. So now we have them all there. You know there's something in the multiple selection arrow because it's uh, highlighted in green at the bottom. Just scroll down, make sure you have nothing else, and click on Apply. Okay, so it's always interesting to know how to manage these uh, search options. If you're familiar with SRM, it works exactly the same. ECC is the same thing. So if you click on the multiple selection, match box, and so on, you can always search for more things. And we have all our forwarding order numbers here, all the ones I created since this morning and the ones I uh, just created now. Remember, again, you can scroll to the right and see everything that is linked to this document. Okay, so the MOU, consignee, ordering party, whatever information is relevant for you in this case. Okay, so let's click on 401. which I know is a DAP scenario. So in this case, we don't have the forwarding orders generated. And I did this one this morning, so it should have been there's more than enough time for it to generate. Just to make sure if this is my DAP scenario or LOA scenario, if we remember what we did yesterday, we went to the General Data tab, and we were able to see in the settlement terms the Incoterm DAP. Okay, So delivery at place, and still in the document flow, we have no freight orders generated. So the issue still continues. Uh, it started, I guess, this morning. As far as I know, it should have generated it. But we'll do it ourselves. Okay. Remember, again, what was important, the general data tab, business partner tab, where we would see exactly that, right, uh, which are the uh, shipper, consignee, ordering party. In this case, all the information is there already under business partner, and we're just looking at the forwarding order, the locations, dates, and times. We saw that as well, source, destination, location, with the addresses of each. All this information taken directly from the data in the Excel. This actual route tab, we didn't really spend much time on that one because it wasn't offering us any more uh, value than locations and dates. We saw the document flow, and we, I think, also took a look at some other tabs, maybe statuses that was, or the map where we could see the actual visual of the uh, the freight orders or the legs themselves, right? That we had to uh, that the system would generate. So in this case, it didn't generate freight orders, so we'll do it ourselves. But just a brief refresher on how the um, the tabs worked and what was important in each one of these tabs. So in the forwarding order document, general data, business partner, location, document flow, and probably just the status are, are the tabs that would be really relevant. 
because we would see if the execution has been started or not started, if it's in planning or planned, its life cycle status. So we see that nothing really has happened with this um, this document itself. Something we can take a look at today that we didn't see yesterday was the items uh, section here. The second section at the bottom, if we want the items to display, we have all our items in each one of these tabs, no matter which one I go to, I'll always have a bottom section here. I can change that bottom section if I want to for something else. Okay, and to do so, it's just really a matter of playing around with the configuration here. If we personalize it, and we say open personalization dialog, dialog box, we'll have the uh, where we see here column one in the stacks. Stack one is everything that's at the top with all the different tabs. And if we scroll to the bottom, we'll probably be able to see another stack or column two, in this case, to be able to see the items that we have at the bottom. Okay, in this case, and even the layout is different. So we have layout of section two, where we see it also called as column one. We can also just do it up here with uh, stack two if we want to. But since we already have the layout of section two displayed here, we can add more items to this one. In this case, nothing that we're able to do here. We can reset the default and save. Select anything we'd like to add here. Okay, so. All right, I'm going to not save that one, so we can cancel. Okay, I'll go back to the uh, open personalization dialog box and see. In this case, it's not letting me, unless I reset to default. Let's see if I can just do that, and now it'll allow me see. Once we do that, it still remains the same. Okay, so I guess it's not working that well right now. Anyway, just wanted to show you, there you go, now finally here. The Add button has to show up first. So let's say in this case I wanted to add a new section that I want to see. Like, for example, one that was very important yesterday and I made reference to was the document references. So this this column here doesn't usually appear in, in our uh, display of our document, but it's very important because it will constantly show you all those documents that are linked together with this forwarding order or with this freight order or with this freight unit. So I would definitely recommend at least searching for this document references and adding it. Okay, if it should now be, if I go all the way to the bottom here, document references will show here as stack number two, which will be a second line. Okay at the bottom. So let me delete this one here. Let me select and delete this column one so it doesn't interfere with my document references. So again, how did that happen? We clicked on the icon here for personalize. We clicked on add. We selected from these items that are not initially vis visible. We selected one of them. We clicked on OK. In this case, I'll click on cancel and we save. Okay, once we save, we should have at the bottom our document references here, that if I unfold, we'll be able to see any document that is linked to this uh, document, this forwarding order. So right now we see nothing yet because it's a load list, so all we have is a forwarding order and a freight unit, but if this was a shopping cart, we would already be able to see the inbound delivery and the PO number, which is quite important. All right, so basically that is it for reviewing these documents. Let's go now back to our transportation cockpit. So we can start working around with some of these uh, transportation proposals. So remember, we went to the uh, planning, clicked on transportation cockpit, and once that screen loaded, in this case, we only have two options, non-LOA scenarios and LOA scenarios. Yesterday, we did not take a look at the DAP Incoterm scenarios because eventually the system generated the FOs automatically. But in this case, we can because it's not doing so for the load list. We would select this line, click on Continue, and it'll take us to the page where all the freight units that have been generated and still have no freight orders are all here pending. Okay, I'll take a quick look at the chat. Okay, nothing there. Let's see if we have any new participants. Yes, we do. So, Sam, welcome. If at any point you have a question, you want me to clarify something, I know you just joined us, so I'm not sure how much you missed. Again, the session is being recorded. You can stop me at any time or interrupt me by clicking on your unmute button and speaking up. So what we're doing right now is we're going to start planning the transportation. We're going to do this manually for a DAP Incoterm scenario or a, what we call an LOA scenario under the uh, COE. 
the contingency on the equipment end-to-end -end process flow that we're doing today. And we're doing so because the system and the training environment in this case is not automatically generating free orders, but it should. Okay, so the the what, what should really happen with the system and in production, I'm sure it happens uh, without an issue, is that these freight units should already have freight orders assigned to them that the system automatically generates. So we're going to be doing this manually now. So I'm selecting the first line here, which is for the 2nd of June, 2019. It's a freight unit ending in 2-2. There's no other freight unit ending in 2-2. There's only, it seems, one line item here. I'm selecting that one. Again, there's nothing on our sides yet on the other on the other sections. This one here where it says freight orders is going to be populated once I have generated. Yes? Oh, hi, Cyril. I just thought it was one of the uh, students. OK, thank you. All right, so we would have our freight orders. We're going to have this section populated once we start uh, managing the transportation. OK, and, but at the bottom, the overview section in trucks are not yet available for this uh, phase. So I've selected my freight unit here. I can make this screen bigger if I want to by maximizing. OK, we have our freight units, requirement documents, and all the information linked to that. And I'll click on transportation proposals here at the top. All right, so once we click on that, the system will take us directly to the transportation proposals that by default are generated by the systems, by the systems master data that starts linking a source location with destination location and generates a number of, let's say, stopovers. Okay, in this case, we have uh, one of these internal errors. It happens sometimes in the training environment, but we can quickly just go back and do that again. So, Sam, since you just uh, joined in, I'll just tell you where I am now. In the tab for planning, transportation cockpit hyperlink, I just clicked on that to view all the pending, let's say, uh, freight units that are still don't have freight orders generated. In this case, I'm looking at the LOA scenario here, clicking on continue. And that took us to the page we were looking at before. I selected one of the freight units. And you can tell that none of these have freight orders yet generated because the section to the right where it says freight orders have no freight orders there yet. We still have to generate them. So we select the freight unit that we're interested in, click on transportation proposals. And if hopefully the system works, it'll take us to the next screen. Sometimes it takes three tries. Hopefully this is not one of the cases. And I hear some background noise here. Uh, Cyril, I don't know if you're hearing me, but you are unmuted. And I don't think I have the ability to mute you. OK, I'll send you a, a text if you can't hear me there. All right, so what did we have here? All right, so as I was saying, here are the transportation proposals that the system has generated based on the freight unit that I selected. So we have, you see our freight unit here, we have to one, two, three, four, and five proposals. But if we scroll down to the right, we'll see that the system has generated a larger number of proposals. So each one of these proposals is generated by the system's master data that tells you based on either distance, uh, cost, uh, duration, if it's the means of transportation is air or it's sea, how many different stages or legs will be involved in this transportation proposal? One for stage one, two, and three. OK, so in this case, we'll have three stops. And if we keep scrolling down, we could see probably one with more than three stops or less than three stops, depending on what we're looking for. It seems that all of them are at least three uh, different stops. To understand which one of these stops uh, which means of transportation is involved in each one of these stops. We have the first stage here, which would be truck, stage two, air, and then truck again. And to the right, we have our source location, destination location for each one of these. So our first origin takeoff would be from a truck means of transportation to Jakarta Airport, Jakarta Airport to Goma Airport, and Goma to the final destination mission. In this case, we can scroll to the right and see that we have a number of more uh, 
critical information here, which is the distance, the duration, the cost of this transportation, and you can filter the columns by anything that may be more interesting to you in terms of uh, what you want to see first in terms of transportation proposals. So let's say it's cost, and we're looking at probably uh, sorting this from descending to ascending, so I want the cheapest. And now again, uh, don't pay attention to these numbers. This is just training master data in uh, production. These will be accurate uh, costs and a cost that will be updated in master data that will be updated every certain amount of time by the master data team. Okay, and if I look over to my right, that's proposal 16 that the system considers to be the cheapest in cost. So if that's the one we're interested in, all we do is select here for the proposal for this freight unit specifically, 22, and click on accept, sorry, not route, but accept planning. Once we do that, the system will now, or should now, generate on the side here the three freight order proposals, but I don't think it's working that well the Excel load. We do see here now the loading location. If we see in this column here, let me extend that, where it's planning status, we do see now that we have the three green check marks, okay, which tells us that these three freight units have now planned status, so they have freight orders. By some, for some reason, for COE, it's not working that well, and it's not showing on the side here in the training environment. We would save that just to make sure these freight orders are generated. And once it says save successfully, we click on the freight unit and go directly to the page that will show us. There you go. Let me just let me make this a bit smaller. Okay. And we have here the three freight orders that are generated. See, I have to do these myself. So for this freight unit, we have the three freight orders generated. Let me make this smaller here for items. Okay. So we did change the um, the view of this page for one of our uh, freight uh, units, but we didn't change it for this one. So again, if you wanted to change it here, you could do that as well. Remember, going to personalize and changing and doing it the way you want to have it. So now that we have all our documents linked together here, we can go and click on each one of our freight orders that we have and start either taking a look at the tabs, submitting events, making sure that um, all the information and the data is accurate. In this case, this is what we would call a DAP scenario. So of course, we wouldn't have to raise a shopping cart for freight. If by any chance this was one of the X-Work scenarios, which we can do that as well, and we can do that quicker now that we have that. So I'm just going to click out of all these and go back to the cockpit here and instead of selecting a DAP or LOA scenario I'm going to do it for the XWorks. Click on continue and now I'm going to generate the freight orders the way it should be done for the um, Incoterm XWorks here. So I'm going to select the freight unit ending in uh, 05. Let's see this is for June 1st so I can select one of these. And again, do the, exactly the same process as I did before, transportation proposals. Okay, again, uh, Cyril, I'm not sure you can hear me, but if you could mute yourself. Let me just send a quick message in the chat here, so you can hear me. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Just wanted to make sure that was done here. So we're just going to go faster for this one. So now we have a number of transportation proposals as well. I'm going to select the very first one and do accept planning. Okay, again, same thing. We don't have the FOs on the side here, the freight orders on the side, but we do know that they're planned based on what we see here. I'll click on save. And once the system tells me it's okay, I'll just click on the freight unit and go directly to that freight unit here. Okay, freight orders are now displayed. So if we remember what we did yesterday, I know at least that Tamara and Sal were here yesterday. Once we have our freight orders, we can click on one of them to view what it looks like. 
right now we're in the execution tab. I don't know if you remember that one from yesterday, but since uh, Sam was in, in yesterday's session, we can take a look at that now here. Uh, let's go to document flow. We see in this case that the uh, freight order is leading the uh, set of documents here. Okay, and I think Cyril, you're now back in the... Uh, if you're listening to us, just mute yourself, please, because we, we kind of were hearing the background noise there for a while, and I'm not able uh, to mute Sorry. You. Yes, I would do that. Oh, okay. Thanks. All right. Good. Okay. So we're taking a look at one of the freight orders, which would be one of the legs in the transportation proposal. Again, what is important in the freight order? As we saw yesterday, we were looking at the charges. So we go to the charges tab here, and we would see if uh, by any chance these were already, uh, depending on the master data, we would have a number of charges here already set up. The execution tab is also important because it shows us the types of events that would have to be submitted, whether they're expected or unexpected. All expected events would be displayed here automatically. If they're unexpected, we would have to insert them. The notes that we're going to add, and we're going to be playing around with this one quite a bit now, so with this one in CCP, so we see how one system affects the other. The attachments that we want to add, maybe we can upload something here as well, so we see that later. The status, okay, the status tab is important to understand uh, if this freight order is has already been assigned a uh, freight PO. So in this case, what we do have here, it says carrier assigned, but there's no confirmation status yet, and the execution status has not started yet. Let's go now to the um, business partner tab, because um, I'm interested in seeing if, since the system is not working 100% uh, well, all right, this is what I wanted to look at. The carrier automatically shows as a dummy, right, because we haven't assigned the freight PO yet. And that's exactly what it should look like, right? Or it should be dummy for each one of these uh, legs or freight orders. Now we're going to assign the freight PO, and that should um, change from Z dummy car to whatever uh, freight forward that we assign it. Okay, so basically, again, the tabs that are important here, document flow, charges, execution, notes, and attachments, and also very important would be the output management tab here. We will select COE air only show here, actually, if I can make this a little wider, probably not. But we would select the line here for COE, go to document preview, and here's where we would download our document. Okay, so here's where we have our SOW form, okay, and everything related to it. So all the freight orders that have been generated from this uh, freight unit or everything that's linked to the MOU that we uploaded in this Excel will show up here in the SOW. So we can always just save this, which I'll do now. And I'm going to try to upload this very same here. I'm going to just save this on my desktop if I can. Okay, so we're going to do this in the O file here. And I'm going to put that somewhere where I can access later on and attach it to the Attachments tab. So I'm just quickly you know, in the training package, just so I make sure I know where it is. Yeah, I know it looks like it's being lost here, but to me it makes a lot more sense when I start uploading files. Okay, so this is the SOW document that we're going to be attaching to the freight shopping cart. Okay, so, so far we're looking at the freight order, and if we go back to our... PowerPoint, just to understand where we are. We have already uploaded our Excel. We have uh, worked around the Excel. We see where the uh, where each tab feeds from each other in each field in this load list. We have uploaded this list into TM that generated our forwarding orders and our freight units. So this whole section here for load list has already been covered. In the plan, we saw that uh, for the LOA stage, it should have generated the FOs automatically, but uh, the uh, training environment is having issues, particularly with the COE load list with the troops. It works fine, and we have to generate these manually. We did the same for the non-LOA scenario. We saw how we selected our freight units, TM-generated proposals, 
calculated charges and generated the SOW. And what we're going to do now, just like we saw yesterday, this whole section here for the freight shopping cart, we won't do because uh, you're more uh, familiar with this than I could ever be. And what we're going to do is directly go to TM and assign the carrier PO and freight um, to the freight orders. Okay, and then we're going to play around with some of these events. So we see how the two systems talk to each other, right? CCP and TM talk to each other, even though we update events in one or in the other, how they're reflected one with each other. Okay, so let's go back to TM. Let's make sure that we are we understand what uh, freight unit and freight orders we're working with. Okay, so in the document flow, remember, this is the freight order that is leading our documents, the freight unit and the forwarding order. So this is my forwarding order ending in 392. The freight order here and the freight unit 905. Okay, so anyway, you could take note of these or not. Uh, but when we search for them and try to assign the um, freight PO to them, it would be useful to make sure that we have the correct uh, numbers here. Now, if you guys look at the bottom here, which says document references, this is what I added before when I was teaching you guys how to personalize your screen. We see now that the document references here are this one here. We have a document ID, which is the forwarding order, and we also have the MOU reference. So you see how it's important we can see at any tab that we're at and any document we're looking at all the documents that are linked to this one. So we see that the MOU, if we're going to need that later on, is the one for Onusco underscore Indobat underscore DEP. Okay, so we can take a look at that. It's also very useful. So now let's go and close all these windows. And what we will do is make sure that we're on the last uh, window available here. And as we did yesterday, freight order management. So we're on the freight order management tab. And what we're going to do is look for the freight orders that are all linked to that MOU reference number. OK, so I'm going to make sure I delete all the information that could be already populated in any of these fields. We saw yesterday that it was better to go to change query. Again, erase everything that is not related to what you're looking for. We don't know the freight order numbers. So let's say we don't know them. And what we do want to do is pull all the freight orders that are linked to the MOU, correct? So I'm just going to make sure I also remove the dates so nothing uh, affects me. But in this case, it's today's date, so that wouldn't make a difference if it stays there. And we have either the forwarding order number here, so I can either write the forwarding order number that I just had before, or I could also write the MOU reference number that was for Monusco. Okay, and we would have to write exactly the uh, MOU reference number because I believe that maybe if I just write a bit of it, it could already recognize which one it is, but no, in this case it doesn't. Okay, I did take note of the uh, forwarding order, so I'm going to use that one instead because I didn't take note of the reference number just for the sake of time. And I know this was forwarding order number 92. And this should show us the, there you go, three freight orders that we generated manually. OK, we see, OK, so it was Indobat Dep. OK, so I could have written that whole thing as well before. It would have showed up just the same way. Remember, if you scroll to the right, you have all the details pertaining to those freight orders, even the forwarding order numbers here. Okay, so as we did yesterday, we selected all three of these, so we can just select all the lines or go one by one and assign a freight forwarder. So what we did yesterday again, subcontracting, assign carrier, and here's where we added the information related to the carrier. So for the sake of time, we're basically just uh, looking for, I believe, the one we added here. Let me just go back because it was already displaying one of them. If it doesn't, I have it saved. Okay, so here we go. We're going to look for Kuninagel, and I believe I have it in the Excel for the sake of time as well. And here it is. So 
I'll just paste that. And here it is, Canagle. So it's 74, okay? And the freight purchase order, which in this case, since there's no integration between TM and SRM, the freight purchase order number could be anything I wish to add here. Honestly, we could just add uh, any number and it would be fine. But of course, in a real life scenario, we would have to add the correct freight purchase order number here and the actual carrier. And once we click on OK, that would assign the carrier and the freight PO number here to each one of these freight orders. So all these freight orders are going to be linked to that freight PO and that uh, freight forwarder. All right, so what we saw yesterday, we clicked on one of these freight orders to see now what I have done is go to the business partner tab and see in the freight order that now the carrier, instead of being the dummy carrier we had, was now the one related to Cunanago. Okay, for each one of these steps. Now let's play around a bit with the submission of events because yesterday we did see that how we could change the charges, how we could change the uh, location and dates. Since we saw that yesterday, today we'll play around a little more with the notes and attachments. Okay, we're looking at a specific um, freight order here, which I'm not sure if it's the first one or the last one, but it's an easy way to find out. If we go to document flow and we check the freight unit, because this is the one that's going to show us, remember the freight unit, since it's everything we can transport at once and it's linked to each one of these freight orders, we'll see uh, practically by order here which one is the first, second, third. If not, we can always go to the stages tab under the freight unit, last one here. And we can see, based on stage one, stage two, stage three, which one would be our first freight order, which would be the one ending in three, two, then three, four, and then three, three. Okay, so our first one that we would want to start working on or submitting events for would be this one, three, two. So we can just click on it directly, open our freight order, and let's start writing some notes and adding attachments here. So let's say, I'm adding notes in this case. And what we would be doing here as uh, TM planners is communicating information that we consider key uh, to the um, freight forwarder or vendor. We would be writing notes directly in TM, letting them know uh, what's, uh, what information we're sharing. So let's say we're sharing uh, handling information, right? So in our first uh, text type drop-down menu, I want to add, let's say, handling information. Of course, we'll stick to English. The internal uh, column here, internal text, if I click on it, that means I'm going to be the only one uh, being able to see this. So, of course, I don't want to click on it because I want the freight forwarder to see it. Content, here, I can write uh, the text. Okay, and this will automatically create it by and create it on will be uh, automatically added once I click on enter. Again, there's nothing more to add or to do in this case. We can just add our message and that will be saved once I click on save. You see the document references number now? We have an extra number, which is the freight PO. So it's always good to have this uh, displayed below. Let's uh, save. And that should already add one of my uh, notes if I wanted to add another one, I could do that here just by clicking on insert. Or if I want to delete it, I can just click on the bin and that would delete the note that I have added. So this note stays there. And now we'll see when we log into CCP how that is visible there. The attachments, same thing. I can go to the attachments tab here and click on insert or drag and drop files in this big square. So if we go to insert, it'd be a folder, a file, or a URL. In this case, it's a file. The system will ask me once again what type of attachment it is. If it's a legal document, a link, a rate table, so on. I'm just going to leave it as attachment. And I'm going to write here SOW and click on Next. And the content, I'm going to browse. So hopefully I don't have to search much uh, further because I put it right in one of these, SOW here. So I'm going to select it and click on OK. And that should upload the file, which is right here as a PDF. I can still make changes to the visibility type. I can either make it external or internal. In this case, I do have to make it external so that it's visible externally. 
in the notes, it was uh, the option of either clicking on the checkbox or not to make it internal or external. Again, you can still change the type of attachment and everything else is perfectly fine. We can just click on save. And now what we have done is practically just added an attachment and added a note for a specific freight order. Okay, the freight order ending in 32, which is the one. So 27732, which is the one that I was uh, working on here. So now we want to see if in CCP we are going to be going to be able to see, sorry, the notes that I added here. This is the test and the attachment that I added here for the SOW. All right, and then again, execution. If we look at the execution tab, we still haven't submitted any of these events. We can also either submit one from here, but in this case, I'll leave it and I'll submit it from CCP so we can see how they both interact with each other. So, so far, I'm going to check the chat. No questions. No one has uh, raised their hand. We still have uh, three attendees here. Okay. So I'll move on now to CCP, log into CCP and start submitting events through there. Okay. Just bear with me one second while I log in. All right, so as you can see, I just logged into the uh, Carrier Collaboration Portal for Kuhn and Nagel. So if there are any freight orders assigned to this freight forwarder, I would be able to see them here. Now, the freight orders for execution are nine. So once I click on this box, it'll take me to a list of freight orders that still have events to be submitted by this freight forwarder. Okay, we also saw that we have our list of freight orders here. And if we scroll to the right, we'll have very important information related to the either goods PO or freight PO or the MOU reference number in this case, since we have uploaded an Excel file. So if we remember the freight PO that I uh, attached here was 25, ending in 25. So I could just simply write down this number here, 234525, and click on Enter. And that should only, I think maybe I put one too many zeros, or I shouldn't put the first one here. I didn't really count how many zeros I had. Put that one back in, and there you go. Okay, so I just don't have to put the first zero here. The freight PO. Ending in 2.5, now I just have those numbers there, so there's really no reason for me to uh, make a mistake here. So in this case, we have the 3.4 uh, and 3.3. Three, three. I believe the one I was editing was 3.2 in uh, TM. I'm not sure. Let me just take a quick look at that one. 3.2, and uh, it's the one that doesn't show. And for some reason, it doesn't show here planned freight or non-LOA. It doesn't show on the carrier collaboration portal. So let's work on these two and see how those react in TM. Okay, so we would click on one of these freight orders. This will also display the list of events and how it looks like in CCP for each one of the uh, legs. So for Jakarta is there. For Goma would be the second list of events. If we need to attach any files, we would do it through here as well. If we need to add any notes, we would do it through here as well. So in this case, we can add the notes here. And then we'll see how those appear later on in TM. We'll add the attachment. In this case, we'll do that here. And we'll also submit an event. Okay, so I'm quickly looking for the file, the SOW file here, and there it is. 
and I'm also going to select this loading begin event, select today's date, and even write uh, today's time. Click on OK and click on update events. Okay, so once we've done that, we've already submitted one of the events that should show up now in TM. You see at the bottoms, uh, the bottoms here at the bottom here, we have the add note feature, which we can just click on the add note feature and we would add a new note. So we can add this is a second test and save that as well. So, so far we have submitted one of the events for loading begin. We have added two notes this time around and we have uploaded an SOW file PDF. Okay, so everything we have done has been done successfully. As we can see at the bottom, it says note has been submitted successfully for freight order ending in 3.4. And now what we'll do is we'll go back to TM and see uh, what that looks like in TM. Okay, so we'll leave this one open. Oh, now we have our 3.2 freight order. I was wondering where that one was hiding before. Okay, so I've added some things in the 3.4, but I added things in 3.2, in the freight order 3.2 in TM, and I want to see how those look like here in, uh, in CCP. Okay, so let me just click on this freight order. And basically now, if we're looking at these events, we see that none have been submitted for 3.2. Two for the freight order 3-2 that we're looking at. But if you look at the bottom uh, column here where it says uh, the notes, my note where I wrote the first one, it's, this is a test was already there. That's the one I wrote in TM. If we also scroll all the way down, we see that we have the SOW PDF file that I uploaded in TM. It's already here. But no events have been submitted because I haven't submitted any events in TM. I could always just go right back to the 3.2 freight order, go to the execution tab, and now submit one of the events. So I'm gonna just click on edit, and I'm gonna go report event for handover document. I'm gonna select the next one, report event. And now both of these are green, which means they are both reported. Click on save, data saved successfully. I'll go back to CCP. And I'll just make sure I can refresh this page. Again, now we have 10, so maybe I could have just refreshed it from that page. And we were looking at 3.2, okay, the freight order 3.2, so I can just click on that one. And now what we should see is, see, two of the events submitted with a green check mark, the note that I added and the PDF that I added before. Let's go back to 3.4. And what we did from CCP is we submitted one of the events. We added two notes. This is a test, and I added another one called this is another test, if I'm not mistaken. And I've attached a PDF as well here, which I don't see now, but I know I made an attachment here before. Let's just do it again just in case for the SOW. Upload, uh, I didn't click on upload before, that's why it wasn't there. Okay, and I'm gonna write two messages this time. This is another test. Okay, so we can move on. Uh, actually, I did click on that event and we can close this page, move back to TM click on the 3-4 freight order and view that uh, the two have communicated with each other. So if I look at the execution first tab, we should be able to see that one of the events is already submitted and that was done through CCP. Attachments should show us, there you go, the SOW attachment that was uploaded, see, created by, and it says right here, it was created by the freight forwarder, not by us. If we go back to the 3.2, we'll see it was created by our username. And in the notes tab, we should have, this is a test, also created by the freight forwarder. If I go to the other one, let's go back to this one for 3.2. Again, we're looking at the freight order 3.2. If I go to notes, it'll say it's created by 
this user and the attachments uploaded by myself and not CCP. Okay, not the uh, freight forwarder in CCP. So basically, we didn't have a chance to see these yesterday, but today we did. How the two systems, TM and CCP, communicate with each other. We uploaded an Excel file, uh, the load list that we saw here, that is for the contingency on the equipment. So we've pretty much covered everything we wanted to cover today, which was loading the Excel, looking at the documents generated, forwarding order, freight unit, we went through the planning stage in TM. We assigned the uh, freight PO. We didn't look at the uh, editing of routes, dates, and charges because we did that one yesterday, but we did spend a lot more time updating events today, both in CCP and in TM, and saw how the, both systems speak to each other. Okay, so if you guys have any questions, now would be the time to ask. Okay, I don't see anything in the chat. And if you do not, well, this would be uh, probably, I know there's still maybe nine minutes to go, but if you have a question, that would be the moment to ask. If not, we can just call it a day. If you want me to repeat something in TM, I'll do that as well, or in CCP, I'll do that as well. So I see Tamara, Sal, Sam, if you guys have any questions, suggestions, now's the time to propose them. Okay, so in this, thank you, Sam. No questions from your side. And so, uh, thank you. Okay, so the cargo list uh, portion of the WebEx was useful, so thank you. All right, and thank you, Tamara. So if you guys are okay with it, uh, we'll just call it a day. We got eight minutes to go, but I think uh, it's quite clear. Tomorrow we'll go through the troops end-to-end -end process flow which uh, works very similar to what we saw today for the contingency owned equipment uh, the excel is uh, similar it just works differently because we have two different types of excels but the process is the same so we can just go through this uh, process one more time and, and we'll know it by heart by tomorrow and then we'll i'll send you guys the link to the assessment after tomorrow and you guys have a week to take it Okay, I have a week to uh, take the assessment. You only have one chance, even though you take it more than one time. The first time you take it is the one we're going to be evaluating, and we'll get back to you with your results. All right, so I won't take any more of your time. Thank you for participating in the WebEx. And if you have any more questions, I'm writing my email. <laughs> okay, thanks, Tamara. I'm writing my email in the uh, chat, just in case you guys want to reach out to me, but you should have it in your inbox from the emails I've been sending you this week, okay? So enjoy your afternoon, now your morning, actually your day, it's early in the morning for you guys, okay? Take care.